Power Ranking Show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, basketball, baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and the easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games that are available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code Believe for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And that, of course, is the voice of at Marcus underscore Mosher. This is the Power Rankings podcast, a.k.a. the Power Rankings show. And today we're actually living up to our title. We're going to rank some teams, yo. I don't know why I said it like that. Yeah, we're <laughs> Thanks for being so excited that yeah, we're here. Yeah, sweet. That's week uh, one. I can't use all my energy up in week one. I, I understand. Uh, obviously, the uh, we're recording this uh, early Thursday. The Chiefs Lions will kick off tonight at Arrowhead. Arrowhead doesn't have some kind of sponsor name now that I need to know of, like Chat GPT Stadium or something. Does I think it? It's Blue Chew at Arrowhead Stadium. <laughs> yeah, it's great, great, awesome. Well, uh, that being, I'm not even going to follow that up with okay. a pun. I thought about it, uh, but the Lions will be traveling there. The Lions who um, had a lot of pressure on them this year coming into uh, uh, a season where people think they're actually the favorite in the NFC North. And one of their problems last year was winning on the road, specifically their offense playing well on the road. We'll see if they can get a good offensive game. They should be able to beat Kansas City, quite frankly, mm-hmm. uh, because of uh, certain factors with Chiefs, both health and uh, a contract situation that's played out all. Uh, training camp and preseason. But we're here to talk about a bunch of other games. If you want to hear about our preview of that game and the other games, we already recorded a uh, PIX podcast, and uh, you can go listen to that as well. So, all right, let's start with our bottom batch of teams on our first power rankings of the uh, 2023 season. And uh, if you are not watching uh, our little video that we put together, Marcus put together our beautiful graphics with Tecmo Helmets. Mostly Tecmo helmets. Mostly Tecmo helmets and some cutouts. Some construction paper for the uh, Houston Texans. But, by the way, the Texans are not last. We've got the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, you're, if you're listening along on Spotify or whatever, at number 32. Cardinals have got a little bit of an issue at quarterback, I would say, right now. They've got uh, uh, an issue. I think they're going to have an issue scoring points. And I don't really love their defense either. And Marcus, right ahead of them, I have the Rams at 31, who I also think have big-time problems, especially with uh, Cooper Cup uh, on the shelf. Any issue with these at the bottom? No, can we just say something nice about the Cardinals? Because I feel like everybody's been dogging them out for the last couple days, right? Talking about how they're going to tank. I do like some of their weapons. I'm I'm excited to see like Hollywood Brown now that he's fully healthy. They got Trey McBride, a second-year tight end. Uh, Greg Dorch had a really nice season last year as a slot receiver. So they had, do have some players I'm interested to, to watch this year. The Rams, uh, I just mentioned them. I am interested to see how Matt Stafford uh, plays this season. And if he's still in a Ram helmet by the end of the year, uh, Anthony Richardson will be playing his first regular season game in a Colts helmet. I've got the Colts at 30. And then the Panthers also have their own young quarterback. They're playing. Uh, I, I do like the Panthers defense better than any of these teams at the bottom four, but uh, I still feel like they're the 29th best team. So, so far I got Cardinals 32 Rams, 31, the Colts at 30 and the Panthers at 29. Yeah. I think that Panthers defense is going to be good enough to keep them in a lot of games early in the year while Bryce young kind of gets up, gets up to speed, but man, that offense, uh, maybe no Adam Thielen this week, probably no DJ Chark. Terrace Marshall doesn't look like he's going to play. It's a tough situation for a, rookie Bryce Young in his first start. I don't really know where to put the Bucks, but I feel like they're kind of on there, as you like to say, tier. I don't like them as much as my 27, 26, and 25 team, but I feel like they have a little bit better veteran leadership. Uh, and I'm, I'm trusting that Baker can at least play adequately. He's got a lot of experience, uh, which the quarterbacks at 29 and 30 certainly don't. Uh, so I have the Bucks at 28. At 27, 26, and 25, I have these teams kind of on a par. The Washington Commanders at 27. Uh, they're starting a new quarterback in Sam Howell, but I like the rest of their personnel better than the Bucks. Marcus. I've got the Texans at 26. This is a vote for D'Amico Ryans. I do like some of their personnel, but again, question at quarterback for Houston. And then at 25, Sean Payton and the Broncos. Different kind of question at quarterback with Russell Wilson, but the defensive personnel uh, for the Broncos is better than any of these teams. Uh, in the bottom eight. 
of these eight teams that you'd name, which team do you think has the best chance to make the playoffs this year? Oh, gosh. You know, as much as I would say an NFC South team, I really think it's going to between the, be between the Saints and the Falcons there. Um, I, but but I would say that the Broncos and probably the Bucks have the best chance. The Bucks because they're in the NFC South. Yeah. Uh, the Broncos, I think, are the best team on this list. And look, if the Raiders end up very, very weak, if the Chargers charger – and have a lot of injuries, then maybe as a second place team in the AFC West, the Broncos could sneak in there. But it's hard to go against any NFC South team right now. That division's totally up for grabs, and you could have a losing record and make the postseason. Yeah, I know. I I don't like this Tampa Bay team, but they still have got a a defensive minded head coach. That I think is pretty good. I think the talent on defense is really good. The offensive line's an issue, but they've got weapons. I. I don't know. I, I don't trust the quarterback at all, but I think he might be the most competent quarterback in the division at the same time, which is crazy to say. This is one of those teams that you can say running backs don't matter, but the running game absolutely matters. Yeah, they've the got Bucks. to run the ball. They they want to limit uh, turnovers uh, and, and obviously play to the strength of the defensive side of the ball. Um, yeah, I, I think that's their route to win. But let's look at the next eight so I don't get depressed here. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, that's all right. Uh, all right, so at 24, I've got the Las Vegas Raiders. I know you're a little bit higher on them than I am. I don't know if you're higher at this spot. I put Atlanta at 23 above the Raiders because I think the Falcons are going to cause some matchup problems for teams. Mm -hmm. And if both quarterbacks for Desmond Ritter and Jimmy Garoppolo do not play well, I like the Falcons better to actually make use of what they have, whereas I feel like the Raiders' best weapon might be Devontae Adams, and he's going to need his quarterback to play at least decently well. Yeah, it's just the Raiders have so much star power on their team, right? They've got an all-pro running back, an all-pro receiver, uh, a Pro Bowl defensive end that could easily be the defensive player of the year this year. Um, I, I And I, I'm going to keep mentioning this over and over. they got, I think, the best special teams unit in the league between Daniel Carlson and A.J. Cole. I think those guys are going to help them win some games that they maybe shouldn't, but I love Atlanta's offensive line, and that's why I would have them higher than the Raiders. So I like this call. Also, with Atlanta's uh, schedule, the ability for this young team to build confidence is great. And that can make your team play a lot better when you've got a bunch of uh, young kids that you're relying on. And uh, starting with quarterback and tailback there. And the receivers are young, too. Sure. I mean, the Falcons have a lot of young talent. Uh, Green Bay is uh, basically relying on their young talent at quarterback, Jordan Love. They still have a pretty strong veteran cast. I wouldn't say this is a super strong team, but this is not a team that I could see going four and 13 or five and 12. No. If the Packers falter, I think it's going to be more of a seven, 10 at worst uh, record, but I actually like the bears a little bit, bit better. I think Justin Fields takes a step forward. And I think the defense for the bears is going to be somewhat formidable this year. So I have the Packers at 22, the bears at 21. Just think the bears have a higher ceiling, right? I think that running game, regardless of fields gets better as a passer, they're going to be able to win games because of the rushing attack. They added weapons in DJ Moore, year two of chase Claypool. And then they added so much talent on defense between TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds, uh, Yannick Ngakwe now as an edge rusher, they're going <laughs> to, they're still going to be pretty bad on defense, but they should be nowhere near as bad as they were last year. So 20 through 17, I kind of have on a par. Uh, that would be the Saints at 20, the Patriots at 19, the Titans at 18, and Pittsburgh at 17. I think all four of these teams are your quintessential 8-9 and nine or 9-8 nine and eight teams. I think the Saints have, the, have a lot of talent still on that team. And again, they play a really weak schedule. But I question the coaching a little bit. Whereas with New England, Tennessee, and Pittsburgh, I don't question the coaching. That's why I have them uh, even here. With New England, I do wonder about the quarterback. I mean, this is they were shopping their quarterback in the offseason. Uh, Tennessee could sneak up on some teams. I do worry about certain spots with the Titans. I, I don't entirely trust uh, the secondary for the Titans. For starters, maybe you do. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I wonder about their passing game, even though they got DeAndre Hopkins. And then Pittsburgh, you've been pointing them out all all off season that they could sneak into the postseason. I could see any one of these four teams sneaking in the postseason. The Saints for a different reason, though, because of the division they're in. 
everybody's been on Pittsburgh as a sleeper team this year, and I get it. There, there's a lot to like. The schedule's really soft outside of their AFC North opponents. I will point out one negative thing for the Steelers team. It, if they don't end up becoming this 10-7, and 11-6 and 6 team that everybody anticipates, it's going to be the, the age on defense. This is a mm-hmm. really old defense between – Cam Hayward, who's 34 years old. AJ Watts or TJ Watts, like an old 29 years old. They have Patrick Peterson as their number one cornerback. He's 33 years old. Demonte Casey is 31 to free safety. Keanu Neal, who's going to be playing a lot of snaps, is 30 years old. They signed Desmond King, a 30 year old slot corner. Like it's just a really old defense. And we just don't see that very often in the NFL anymore. No, and especially when you look at the youth on offense with this team, it's kind of interesting. So, uh, again, the Saints at 20, the Patriots at 19, the Titans at 18, the Steelers at 17. I could see any one of these teams sneaking in the playoffs. I don't really think they're as strong as the playoff field is, even if one of them does. These aren't uh, standings. These are power rankings, how good the teams are. Let's look at the uh, next batch of teams. A little bit better here. Let's start here at the top with the Giants at 16. You know, it's hard for me to trust them. Uh, Daniel Jones looked really great against Minnesota in the playoffs. The passing game was kind of firing on all cylinders. And then against Philadelphia, this team was absolutely terrible, terrible. And really to me, huh? Which time? which time against Philadelphia, right? You know, with this team somewhat similar to the Bucs, although I think this team is different than the Bucs. I really think the running game matters and playing to the strengths of your defense letting that defensive line do its work. That's really where this team is going to make, hey, winning some games 20 to 17 and also uh, good coaching decisions, which I I really believe in their head coach. But the Giants to me are the quintessential 16th best team in the league. They are right at the middle of the pack. They just need a number one receiver in the worst way, right? Like if if you told me, maybe it doesn't even need to be a number one receiver, but like if you told me Mike Evans was on this Giants team going into the season, I think I might have them inside my top 12. It's just such a massive hole on this team that I don't know if they're going to be able to overcome it. I flipped around 15, 14, and 13 a number of times, asked Marcus his opinion. I've got Seattle at 15, Minnesota at 14, and Cleveland at 13. And what you all asked me was, well, who has the most upside of Cleveland, Minnesota, and Seattle? And I think it's Cleveland. I agree. Because they really didn't get a lot out of their quarterback last year. They have arguably the best running back in the game. They've got a top five offensive line in the game. They have arguably the best defensive player in the, the game, certainly the most consistent. And their defense kind of underperformed last year. Now, I think you can certainly question some coaching with Cleveland and Minnesota. I don't question it with Seattle. But I do Still kind of think Minnesota's a better team than Seattle. Seattle was so Geno Smith dependent last year on him having a great year. They kind of lucked out against the Rams at the end of the year uh, in that weird game that ended up sending Seattle to the playoffs and keeping Detroit at home. Any issues here with these three teams? I could see all three of these teams being in the playoffs. I could also see all three of these teams narrowly missing the playoffs. I like all three of these teams. Like kind of individually, I do like all three of these teams. I I agree with you on Cleveland having the highest upside. One of the things that we don't take account enough is the upgrade and coaching changes that we see from year to year, not just head coaching, but like Mm -hmm. coordinators. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention who the Browns defensive coordinator was last year because I don't want to trash him, but getting Jim Schwartz this year, I think is going to be a massive upgrade. And that defense has a lot of talent and they way underperformed last year. If they play like an average defense this year, they're going to be in the playoffs without question. Yeah, I like the weapon Seattle has. It's going to be interesting seeing Minnesota have the MVP under center and finishing uh, at the 14th spot in the power rankings. Uh, 12 and 11, Miami Dolphins at 12, Jacksonville at 11. I thought about flipping these, but right now Miami's not at full strength. Uh, Jacksonville, I am. This is another kind of little leap of faith like I have with Justin Fields. I have more of a leap of faith for Trevor Lawrence. That's why they're this high. I could see Tennessee challenging for the division, though. Either way, I could see Miami and Jacksonville playing in the early rounds of the playoffs. Uh, What do you think about these two teams? First of all, I hope we get that. Like Jacksonville division winner, Miami being like the fifth seed, right? Like how Mm -hmm. much fun would that be? Yeah. Um, 
I agree with this ranking. I do think Miami has the higher ceiling here, right? They just got way more talent on defense. Their weapons are absolutely insane. And I love Mike McDaniel. If they can stay relatively healthy this year, I think this is a team that has a chance to be the highest scoring offense in the league and potentially have a top five, top six defense. We talked about the Lions uh, at the top briefly. One thing I'd like to mention here, you know, they took a, rhyme, a running back and an off-the-ball backer uh, with their first two picks, high picks, uh, mm -hmm. in the 2023 draft. If both of those guys perform like really solid first-round picks, this team's a little bit scary. Yeah, watch Jack Campbell tonight for the uh, the Lions, uh, our white linebacker. He can run all over the field. He can make a bunch of tackles. One of the things I am curious to see is how does he do in coverage? That's where a lot of young linebackers struggle. Keep an eye to see if Patrick Mahomes picks on him a little bit in the passing game. I always like uh, seeing off the ball backers coming to the league, even though they're not as important as they used to be. I feel like it's a position you can make a real impact yeah. as a as a rookie. Uh, whereas it, and same with running back as well. Whereas it's a little bit harder for quarterback wide receiver. Well, I think that's and, why I think like. that's why Detroit did it. Right? They took two yes. positions where they could get impact players right away because. I think they know like now is our time to go make a run. Not two years from now. It's right now. They haven't had a real impactful linebacker since probably DeAndre Levy around the 2014 season. He was fantastic yeah. for a couple of years. Baltimore Ravens round out this group of teams, nine through 16. We're doing eight to a screen here. Uh, I like Baltimore with Lamar Jackson. And right now they have Lamar Jackson. And without Lamar Jackson, I don't love this team. I think they're more like the 16th ranked team. I mean, that's just a fact. Good analysis right? right there. Well, I, I mean, I'm just calling it like it is. Uh, I do think their secondary can be had. Yeah. And if they yeah. play a Trevor Lawrence or a Tua gets hot, uh, you know, just looking at some of the teams or, or the Vikings, you know, they play teams like that, that a quarterback can get hot. I think the Ravens could be in trouble. Although I don't think Baltimore plays Minnesota this year. Who does the AFC North play in the NFC? They play that's the NFC good... West and then they play the AFC yes, South. Yes, the West. That's right. So they'll be playing the Niners. And, uh, well, they may not have to worry about very many quarterbacks in the West. So no, and, and that's right the thing. There. They open the year with Houston. Uh, they play the Bengals next week, which is hard. But then they play, like, Anthony Richardson. And then you play, uh, you know... Clayton Toon or Josh Dobbs. I mean, it's it's a pretty easy quarterback schedule for Baltimore this year. Again, we don't know how long uh, Matt Stafford will will be on the Rams, and the 49ers have a <laughs> a, a weird quarterback situation, and uh, we don't know that Geno Smith's going to play like he did last he year, will. right? Geno's so, going to win the MVP. You say Geno wins the MVP. I say Kirk Cousins, and both of us are probably okay. wrong. Okay, let's look at the top eight. All right, so uh, going over these one by one, uh, we'll start because these are the best teams in the league. We'll start with the Dallas Cowboys at number eight. Uh, obviously, if you want more on the Cowboys, listen to Locked On Cowboys with uh, Marcus and Landon McCool. They go through them extremely in depth in a 22 minute podcast. And when I mean 22 minutes, I mean it's exactly Close 22 enough. minutes. Close enough. I think Tony Pollard's going to have a big year. I thought he was being drafted a little bit low in fantasy. He's the one guy on this team that I'm not worried as much being affected by the new offensive scheme. I I would agree. He doesn't need to change anything. Uh, I would just really quickly on these, on these eight teams. I think this is, these are the correct eight teams. The order, I think I would change a little differently, but I have no problem with the Cowboys at number eight. Uh, I, they've got a really good roster. I just wonder the change to Mike McCarthy. How is that going to impact? And I I hate their kicking situation. And that's just going to matter yeah, a ton when you get to these really close games, especially in December and January. To be frank, I had no problem putting Dallas's last on the, on the eight here. Cause we're doing four screens, eight teams. And I, I just like all these teams better than them. I think if the chargers stay healthy and that's a big, if they are better than Dallas is uh, Justin Herbert, I think they're better at quarterback. They're better at running back for now. Uh, you know, I think it's a little unfair to, to say Eckler is definitely better than Pollard. They're, they're very good. Um, now receiver, well, we could certainly have a debate, um, but, and we can go further and defense. I definitely like the Cowboys, but I, I, I I'm worried about the Cowboys kicking game as well. And honestly, we don't need to worry about this matchup unless these teams meet the Super Bowl because Dallas is not playing the chargers. This yeah, year. they are week six. Oh, well, they, they week are week six. That's right. You're right. You're right. Which uh, I just remember that's going to be a fun the game. West. That's games in uh, Los Angeles. How many Cowboy fans are at that game? 
we're not playing the i said we because I, I love that you're like back into we you are no, back in on this t- no, cowboys team i love it no i'm not no i'm not it's not the raiders on thanksgiving again is it uh no they i i don't even remember who they play on thanksgiving i have right. it's a one game at a time season elliot some more homerism than i ever want on this podcast because i am not a believer uh, okay. Let's talk about your actual but, team, the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, really. Uh, the, the team that I really like the way they play, the way their organization is run. A little worried about them right now, though. I, I feel like six is a very fair ranking. On one hand, this team has been an absolute Super Bowl contender for the last four seasons, and they still have the personnel to do it. On the other hand, this is a really banged up, depleted team um, that – has a history of slow starts and has got an issue at quarterback. Now they're probably better prepared Marcus to deal with an issue at quarterback than any team in the league is, but it's still an issue. Yeah. And it's, we only had got to see what five regular season games of Brock Purdy last year, was it three playoff games in really only two. Cause he got hurt. So early in that Philly game didn't play particularly well against Dallas, but did was, he was awesome against Seattle in, in the super wild card round weekend. Uh, I don't know. It's the good thing is they, they don't need him to be a star. If he's a C plus, they're going to win double digit games this year. What I liked from the 49ers postseason was number one, uh, Seattle, they dilly dallied in the first half and then they took control in the second half. And that's what you do against a division opponent. It's hard to play a division opponent in the playoffs. Then in the second round, they took Dallas's best punch. I mean, Dallas's defense played out of their minds. And the 49ers were still able to overcome it. And they overcame it on the strength of their great players. George Kittle making that insane catch. Fred Warner getting depth. You know, it was the stars that came up big for the Christian McCaffrey late in the game. The Cowboys defense finally started to wear out just a little bit. And so that's what I liked about them. But, hey, I do think they're going to need some quality quarterback play. And and I don't care who it's from. Uh, Okay. Uh, Buffalo generally gets quality quarterback play. We've been worried about the turnovers. Maybe we've been too hard on Josh Allen. Maybe this ranking is too hard on the Bills down at number five. But there's some consistency issues here, and this is a team that did get pretty well handled by Cincinnati in the divisional round. I don't think there was anything fluky about that game. I'm a little worried about this Bills team. Not to the point like I'm worried that they're not going to make the playoffs or anything like that, but I am worried that – they're falling behind some of the top tier teams a little bit. I think their talent's just a little overrated outside of Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs because how many A plus players does this roster have? Especially now that Von Miller's out for the first month of the year. Uh, right. They lost Tremaine Edmonds, who wasn't that player to begin with, but they just lost more depth. Tredavious White has really regressed over the last couple of years. When you stack them up uh, compared to some of the other teams that you have ranked higher, I just see a significant talent gap between some of these other ones von miller's got to be at least 33 came in the league in 2011 yeah Yeah. he i I couldn't remember if he came in as a 21 year old or a 22 year old so yeah i mean he's he's an older guy now and i you know i don't know what you can expect there uh at number four speaking of older guys travis kelsey i believe came in the league the year or two after was he 2013 or 2013 draft yeah yeah uh this is a lot of guy that Maybe not like TJ Watt. He may not be an old, would you call him an old 29? But Travis Kelsey has taken a lot of hits over his career. And and we always wonder, like, how much longer can he keep this up? He's banged up right now. Chris Jones held out all of preseason and training camp. The Chiefs wide receiver core, you've called the 32nd best (laughs) in the league, uh, which is not good because there's 32 teams. This just in. Uh, I think four is a very fair ranking right now for this team. As long as this team has Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, it's going to be really hard to ever rank them outside of the top five. Mm -hmm. But I think this is the first time in the last, I don't know, Elliot, three years that they haven't been inside the top three, right? Like, they're still among the Super Bowl favorites. I still think they're going to get to the Super Bowl this year. But I think their margin for error is a lot smaller than it's been in the last couple seasons. I still remember when you wanted me to put the Cardinals at number one, your peer pressure was almost over. I'll get out of here. Yeah. Now, well, I'm talking about a couple of years ago when you didn't see the writing on the wall. 2015 is fine. <laughs> no, it's uh, Cincinnati Bengals. I have at number three, uh, a little question for me on Joe Burrow. I think that's totally normal given the injury he's been dealing with going beyond that with the Bengals. I'm really curious how their offensive line is going to play this year. 
last year they had kind of a brand new offensive line. And I thought that was really the, and they had lost their tight end in free agency. They lost their tight end again, uh, second year in a row. I'm talking about Uzama and, and Hayden Hurst, but I, I, I'm a little concerned about that. I also, you talk about a little wear and tear. They had some wear and tear on the pass rush last yeah. year. The Bengals did. And I, I'm, uh, that is in my mind as well. And then Jamar chase, has been banged up. He's had a little bit of a history there as well. So Cincinnati, I think, is the toughest team for me to read uh, in this top five from that standpoint. Here's what I want to see from the Bengals over the first two weeks of the season because they got a tough schedule. It's at Cleveland this week and then home against Baltimore next week, and then it gets a lot easier. Go one and one. Keep Joe Burrow healthy. I, I don't care how you have to do it. Limit how long his dropbacks are, whatever. If you can get out of these first two games one and one and have Burrow and Chase healthy, I think they're going to be just fine for the rest of the year. But if they go 0-2 and, and Burrow re-aggravates his calf or he's clearly not 100%, I'm going to officially be worried about them you know, getting back to winning the division or even you know, being one of the top five or six teams in this conference. Well, it'll be interesting what kind of push they get from the Jets in terms of being a top team in the conference because I have the Jets at number two. Now, uh, of these eight teams, I think the two teams that could really actually three teams that could get off to a slow start are the 49ers, the chiefs and the jets, the jets have new personnel. And I think their offensive line is a question mark, but when you start looking at this team top to bottom, and if you watched hard knocks, which I actually did this year, I haven't watched hard knocks in years. And I decided to watch it this year. I had two questions about Aaron Rodgers. One was, was he going to be all in? And he looks to me to be all in. Number two, arm strength. His arm looks fine to me, oh, Marcus. Awesome. And so yeah. you start looking at their running backs. You look at the fact that they've got not one, but two absolute elite players on defense. By the way, it's not like the rest of their defensive personnel is bad either. This could be a top five defensive unit. I think similar to the Cowboys on this list, there are going to be games that they can lean on that defense uh, like the Cowboys did in that playoff game last year. But the Cowboys don't have two elite defensive players. I'm sorry. I'm not going to put Trayvon Diggs in the elite category. I don't know. You might. I'm not. I think the Jets are the only one on this list that can't. What do you think? Here's the one thing I'm looking forward to this week is how does Aaron Rodgers handle pressure? Is he getting to be like Tom Brady where he just doesn't want to take a hit at all in the early part of the season? Or is he willing to hold on to the ball a little bit longer, taking a hit, a hit to th push the ball down the field and try to make plays? We saw this with Brady last year. If you don't want to take a hit you know, at all, your offense is just not going to be very effective. It's, it's, it's so hard to be efficient that way. But if Rodgers is willing to get beat up a little bit you know, for the betterment of the team, I think this, this, this whole offense and the defense are going to be incredible on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and I misspoke. I was thinking about the AFC when I made that comment. The 49ers absolutely have two elite players on defense. There's no question. Bosa and Fred Warner are elite players, and they've got some really good, good players say, outside Jaron of that. Hargrave is pretty good. Yeah, um, I would say. Uh, I think Greenlaw is pretty good, too. Eric Armstrong, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a scary team when they're healthy, man. But but right now, they're not the best team in the league. I think the best team in the league is Hargrave's former employer, the Philadelphia Eagles, which I do think could miss him. They really got nothing out of their first round pick Jordan last year. Davis. What was it? Uh, Jordan Davis from UCLA, yeah. right? Um, from Georgia, Georgia or Georgia, not UCLA. Um, they, they obviously drafted the kid this year that nobody wanted to seem to like nobody wanted to take a chance on. So now they have all these uh, insane athletes and, and I saw him ready. <laughs> like this is a and really Graham. scary. Yeah, I know it's a really now Brandon Graham could be at the point where he hits the wall. Cause Brandon Graham, I think he came out in what? 10, 2010. Two, like he's 10. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to get better with my draft classes. That is a major weakness. If anybody wants to know my weakness, ask me the Philadelphia Eagles depth chart from 1949 and I can give it to you, but colleges I'm horrible. Um, are there any university of North Texas alums on the Eagles? Mm. Lance Dunbar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, my dog is just going nuts here. Hey, buddy, calm Jimmy down. He, 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 yeah, he doesn't like, no. <laughs> Toby Gowen isn't still in the league, is there he? You go. Uh, but I have the Philadelphia Eagles at number one because I just, 22 on 22, I think they are the best team in the league. Yeah. And I think they have a very, very good leader at quarterback. It's hard to find a major weakness with this team. 
if you had to point out something that would knock them out of this spot, would it be coaching? I just think they're, they're linebackers in their secondary. Whenever they had to play a good defense last year, or sorry, a good offense, like a good passing offense, they really got exposed. The Cowboys lit them up on Christmas Eve. Obviously, the Chiefs lit them up in the Super Bowl. Um, the, the Jags had a lot of success against them on offense. I just mm-hmm. don't know. It was that secondary because it's a lot older now. They lost Marcus Epps. They lost Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I think if you can protect up front, I think you can throw in this Eagles secondary. If you can protect up front. If you can protect. <laughs> and that's what the Giants and 49ers had a really hard time doing uh, in the tournament last year yeah. was protecting up front with this group. So, again, uh, the top eight here, the Cowboys at eight, the Los Angeles, Los Angeles Chargers at seven, the San Francisco 49ers at six, Buffalo Bills at five, Kansas City Chiefs at four, Cincinnati Bengals at three, New York Jets at two, and the Philadelphia Eagles with Jordan Davis from UCLA at number one. Just kidding. Uh, okay, so that's the that's the listing. I feel okay about it. We'll see what happens after Detroit plays Kansas City tonight. But as always, I give you the floor for the final thought. I'm really excited for week one. I, we've got some fantastic games. Uh, we've got some really good storylines. Can you remember a week one with this many quality games between – you know, it starts with the Chiefs Lions. Uh, I love the Chargers Dolphins matchup this week. Steelers 49ers is going to be a really good one. Jets Bills. This this feels like a chance to be like a, one of the better week ones that we've had in recent memory. Yeah, I can. 1949. I was really concerned at the time. You know, would Steve Van Buren's foot problem cause an issue? You know, would the Eagles be able to repeat? Um, you know, I read Lindy's in preparation for this. <laughs> It'd be great if Lindy's had a magazine back then. Oh, it would be. I think that's our cue. So okay. there you go. There are your power rankings for the season. Remember, we did a uh, picks podcast. If you want your picks, be very, very careful, though, with your picks in week one. Just as a reminder, again, this might be the one week you want to sit out unless you're just betting five bucks for fun. But uh, that being said, Marcus covers the Cowboys for Locked On Cowboys. You guys know that already. So if you want to hear more about the Cowboys-Giants matchup, make sure you catch that. He also covers the Raiders for USA Today. Raiders Wire, of course, the Raiders have a fun game this weekend as well. And Marcus does uh, Locked On Dynasty, which you better have done your fantasy draft oh, yeah. uh, by now. And uh, you got anything up for the 33rd team this week? Uh, we've got week one takeaways. So it's going to come out early Sunday afternoon after the one o'clock games. And then my biggest takeaways from Cowboys Giants on Sunday night football. So make sure you get ready to watch uh, read those. Okay. We'll see what happens there. Uh, he is at Marcus underscore Mosher on Twitter. I'm at Harrison NFL on Twitter, and we really appreciate you guys. We will talk to you soon and enjoy the game tonight. Take care, everybody.